Hello everybody, it's Mike Patterson from White Turtle Adventures here in Southern Alberta, Canada. Welcome back to the van. Today I want to cover off something that I get asked quite a bit and that I see asked quite a bit online, and that is, how do you cook in the van? Well, there are two basic ways to do it. A lot of your RVs, a lot of your tiny homes, and many of your vans will have a built-in cooktop of some type. Some of them are standalone cooktops, some of them are cooktops attached to a stove, some of them are cooktops attached to a sink. Now those all have their benefits. They're easy to use, they're easy to open up and fire up and everything like that. The biggest drawback that I found to them is that they're in the vehicle and that you're stuck with having them always in the vehicle. So you have to carry a portable stove with you. For me, when I built the White Turtle 3, I decided that what I would do is I would take a stove that I could use in the vehicle as well as out of the vehicle. And for me, that's the best of both worlds. But on top of that, I actually have a couple different stoves and for different reasons. So today I'm going to go through a little bit about what each stove has, why I have it, and what it does. Now the first stove that I have is the one I actually bought for the White Turtle 3. And that is a propane stove that uses the small one pound bottles. Now, I, I like it for everything that it offers. I love it because it's actually a, quite a big stove considering. Um, it's bigger than some of the ones I saw that were built in units with the sink and I was a little concerned that pots and stuff wouldn't fit on those very well. So with this stove, I actually found it was quite large. It was quite easy to set up and it really it fit everything that I was looking for. The only thing I didn't like about it was, was the one pound bottles. Now, why didn't I like those? Well, the main reason I didn't like those was simply for the fact that it's a lot of waste. You use them for a while and they work great for what they're, what they're made for. And then you throw them away. There's no way of refilling them. Now, I know in the US and possibly in other countries, you can get the small one pound refillable bottles. And I really wish we could do that in Canada, but we can't. Even in the States, when I've talked to a number of people, they said that it wasn't worth it for them to refill the one pound bottles. And uh, I just, uh, I thought that that was kind of funny because it would be the perfect world for me, but they still ended up using the disposable bottles. Now, for me, that works great. It allows me to have a light unit and everything like that. But I also went a little bit more and I actually went out and bought a five pound propane bottle. And that for me is absolutely perfect because with the connector hose, I can use that on my stove. I can use it on my little buddy heater. I can use it on many other things that if I wanted to uh, light and so on and so forth. And it allows me to refill the bottle at actually quite a good cost. Uh, just today I went and actually filled up my five gallon and it was empty and it cost me three dollars and forty five cents Now the one pound bottles that I've been buying when I first started to buy them were two dollars and ninety nine cents Then they went to three dollars and ninety nine cents Then they went to four dollars and ninety nine cents and the last time I went into a store Which is in the middle of our COVID craziness here. They were asking seven ninety nine for a one pound bottle now, to me, that's a little bit expensive. So with the five gallon uh, bottle that I have, it works out very well for that. Now, the second unit that I use quite a bit in the van, and I use this for a specific purpose, is the jet boil. And I have the jet boil because a lot of times I eat freeze dried food. And this is perfect because it boils one cup of water and under a minute, and it's perfect. It, you hook it up, you turn it on, there's a button on the side of it to ignite it, and it comes with its own cup, and the cup comes off of it so that you can fill it full of water, you can then pour it, so on and so forth. Everything for it is perfect. The only thing I don't like about it is, is that it uses a specialized fuel. Once again, I'm carrying canisters, and lately these canisters are more expensive than gold uh, because you just can't get them with our COVID lockdown. So it's been quite a challenge to be able to stay fueled up shall we say with these canisters I was able to pick up two of these ones the other day and I'm actually good now for probably what's going to be the winter um, this one here it says you will get about 108 boils out of this canister here um, when it's at a hundred percent I would say that if you get a hundred you're 
you're doing normal and a little probably 75 is more accurate um, because sometimes you have to let it boil a little bit longer or you don't get to it to shut it off right away but it works wonderful for quick boils um, if you're but like me and you get back to camp and you're really hungry and you don't have time to or you don't want to take the time to make a big supper you can just pour water in here fire it up and you're getting hot water within a minute now I'm not a coffee drinker, I'm not a tea drinker, but it is great for other things. I, I like apple cider, um, or if you're making porridge in the morning, it, this is perfect for that. Um, it's wonderful for what it does. You can actually use the other canisters on it. The problem with them is, is that this is actually a specialized mix. So it's designed for it to be hotter and burn hotter. This will take longer to get it to boil. Honestly, for me, one or the other. Um, I've been told you can actually also use the propane hose connector on it. And I've seen a video of a guy who has it all done like that, but he ended up having to build a base and everything for it. And it was just more hassle than what I think it's worth. At 108 boils or even 100 boils off of this canister, this is going to last me a long time. Uh, figure if I had supper every night using this, there's like three months worth of uh, suppers just with this one canister. So that's pretty darn good for that. Um, I've not found an issue with it. It seems to work good in cold weather and warm weather. Um, I guess if there is one issue with it, it's that I leave it assembled and it takes a little bit of space in the van, but it's not really a big thing. I really do like it. So the third stove that I carry is my Optimus stove. I've had this since the mid 80s. It's a wonderful stove, very basic, very simple, not a lot to worry about with it breaking. Um, the only reason I haven't been using it lately is because it uses white gas. And I found that carrying white gas along with the other fuel that I'm carrying, I just didn't have a need for it. So I haven't been using it a lot for that. Um, this has gone through a lot. This has gone through bicycle touring this has gone through backpacking this has gone through uh, rafting and kayaking and canoeing and everything and it's wonderful it's pretty much bulletproof um, one of the things that brought me to doing this video series was the, a lot of the misinformation out there and one of the things that came up this past week was a lady who's living in her car she says that she needs a way of being able to cook without using a stove because she has no space well the only thing you need in addition to this is a set of matches and a pot in order to cook with. And that is literally right there that you can do all the cooking that you're going to want or need to do. It is wonderful and I have done a ton of cooking in it. So there's one area that I didn't cover off earlier and that is having a campfire. Now a lot of times you can have a campfire and there's nothing wrong with having a campfire. But the issue is, is that sometimes you're just not able to. And if you're relying on a campfire to be your only means of cooking, you could be in trouble. Uh, right now in most of southern or western Canada, and southern Alberta especially, we're under a fire ban. And most parts of the western United States as well is under a fire ban. So having a fire is a bit of a problem. Um, if you have your own stove, you have your own cooking system, you don't have to worry about that. Also having a fire, you have to set up a lot more. You have to cut the wood, you have to carry the wood, you have to get it burning, you have to let it to get into nice embers, and then you have to move on from there. Um, you finish your cooking and then you have to let it cool and then you have to pack it away. Well, a lot of times you just don't have that amount of time to do that. The other issue is, is that parking lots, it's really hard to have a fire in a parking lot. So having a stove just gives you a lot more options to be able to do that. And uh, not only that, but if you have the options to be able to cook inside and outside, then if the weather's not perfect, then at least you have that ability as well. So until next time, it's Mike Patterson from Windy, Southern Alberta. We'll talk to you soon. Have a great day.